So I've been doing a um, <clears throat> series, a mini series on statins and um, cardiovascular inflammation. Now, <clears throat> I uh, did the, uh, I just did a, a video on the Jupiter study. That was a classic study done by Paul Ridker. It was back in 08, I think. It was in the New England Journal. And basically what they showed was um, they took people that had a low uh, LDL, a low cholesterol, but they had cardiovascular inflammation. They gave them resuvastatin or Crestor and cut their heart attack risk in half. And guess what the, um, the editorial was? Yeah, that was a huge uh, increase in, uh, in safety for these people. Should we actually use it? No. So <laughs> I know that sounds kind of weird. But I, I, I will also tell you, I can understand the logic as well. So why don't we go over this, uh, this editorial? It was in the, uh, let me see, the um, New England Journal, January 7th, uh, no, that's uh, November 20th, 2008, the same uh, issue as the Jupiter study itself. And this was by Mark Hlatke. Dr. Hlatke was a fairly uh, big guy within the American Heart Association. Where is that? Uh, he was received grant support from the American Heart Association Pharmaceutical Roundtable uh, for the Stanford Kaiser outcomes. But, <clears throat> and those of you that want to hate on docs that have received grant money to do research, I, I can't. Yeah, just go ahead. Uh, I've got other stuff to do. So let's, but let's go into the details of why Dr. Latke would say, yeah, you cut the risk for these people in half, but I don't think we ought to do it. Um, some of this, I'll tell you, has to do with uh, David Diamond's concept about relative risk. We'll go there as well. So... <clears throat> Moving beyond Jupiter, expanding the orbit of primary prevention. Aphorism, prevention is better than cure, makes perfect sense uh, when applying to a sensible diet, maintaining ideal weight, exercising, not smoking, etc. But increasingly, prevention of cardiovascular disease includes drug therapy. And yes, for all you statin haters out there, I'm getting ready to use that bad word, statins. <clears throat> statins were first tested in subjects in high, at high risk for coronary events and the limits of treatment have been expanded to include persons at progressively lower risk. The results of the JUPITER study, JUPITER actually is an acronym. I've mentioned it many times and I've never really given you the acronym. JUPITER stands for Justification for the Use of Statins in Primary Prevention and Intermittent Trial Evaluating Rosuvastatin. So how did you get that acronym JUPITER out of that? You know, again, it's easier to remember JUPITER, so that's why people use acronyms. Now, before pharmacologic treatment for primary prevention is expanded further, however, the evidence should be examined critically. And I, I think we would all agree. The Jupiter trial enlo enrolled healthy subjects who did not have high cholesterol levels, at least according to the current benchmarks. The entry criterion was an LDL lower than 130, now, most of us would like to get it below one, uh, below 70, and I think at this point the standard is closer to 100. Um, although treatment at this level is indicated with patients who have already had a heart attack or diabetes. Now, in Jupiter, a CRP, C-reactive protein, of 2 or higher was additional entry criteria. So basically what Ridker did was he kept... He kept fighting this losing battle of saying cardiovascular inflammation is causing disease. And guess what? Statins help. So why don't we find people that have low LDL, low cholesterol, but high inflammation? Let's give those people a statin and see if it helps. And again, if you haven't seen that Jupiter video, um, you ought to go take a look because it gets into some more stuff too. But the basics were exactly what this fellow says. He cut it in half. He cut the risk of those individuals for having a heart attack in half. 
Um, <clears throat> the Safety and monitor, uh, Monitoring Board noticed a significant reduction in the primary endpoint, heart attack, stroke, uh, those folks receiving a suicide, 142 primary events versus 250 in the placebo group. So it cut it in half. Now, this, there was a similar reduction. Well, okay, so it cut the, uh, the did it cut um, other heart outcomes like uh, heart attack, stroke, death from cardiovascular Events and the answer was yes. 83 events in the rosuvastatin group, 157 events in the placebo group. So it worked. It saved half the people that were going to die from these things, and prevented half of the events. Now he goes on to raise the right next questions. The result of Jupiter raised two important questions about primary prevention of coronary disease. Should indications for statin be expanded? And how should uh, we use HSCRP in screening? So here's where this starts to go south, at least as far as I'm concerned. The relative risk reductions achieved with uh, Jupiter were clearly significant. However, absolute differences in risk are more clinically important than relative reductions in risk. Again, the David Diamond um, concept, relative risk versus absolute risk. Now here's where that concept holds true, and I'm going to skip over the next couple of statements. The absolute benefit of uh, treatment must be large enough to justify the associated risks and costs. Now at that point, um, Crestor had not lost its patent. It was in the middle of being a blockbuster heyday moneymaker, which meant it cost a lot. It was sort of like Pitavastatin or uh, Lavallo today. Very expensive, expensive, hundreds of bucks per month. Now, the proportion of uh, participants with hard cardiac events in Jupiter was reduced from 1.8% or 157 uh, out of 8,901 subjects to 0.9%. In other words, again, cut it in half to 83 out of 8,901 subjects. Thus, here's where the whole thing went south. 120 participants were treated for two years, 1.9 years, to prevent one event. Now you read that and you begin to say, well, Brewer, what are you thinking? That's not irrelevant at all. And I would agree, that's not irrelevant at all. But then I, you, I, you have to go back and think, well, then why did I finally give in and start taking statins? Because I was one of these guys that believed this uh, until I turned until February of uh, my 57th year on this earth. At that point, my risk of having a heart attack or stroke, or at least my knowledge of that risk, skyrocketed to 40 percent. I thought it was. 2% walking into that CIMT room, but then I had a positive CIMT. And uh, here, were, here were the, uh, the locations. It was in the, uh, the bulb of the carotid. That's where they almost always are. And here's my arterial age. I've shown that many times. Uh, 73 years um, compared to an average of 57 at a 57-year-old. So... <clears throat> I was suddenly in a totally different category. And you know what? All your risks are good. Your cholesterol is low. Your probability of having a heart attack and stroke is way less than 10%, maybe 2%. Have you had a CIMT? Now, how do I know it gets up to 40%? Well, the Cafe de Caves study. Um, again, this image is uh, credited to my old friend and coworker. And mentor, Brad Bale. Um, and I don't think you can see that Bale Deneen image, but this is uh, some of the stuff that Bale Deneen provided um, <clears throat> to those of us who got the right who got that training. This is the Cafe's de Cave study, and you may remember that if you've seen any of the CIMT videos that I did with Todd Eldridge. So here's what happens. You're looking at people who uh, do not have 
high risk by Framingham. They took, what, 10,000 of them. And then they did CIMT. And in the group that had plaque, it was at least, it went from less than 10% heart attack and stroke risk to 40%. In the group that had plaque that actually disrupted flow, it was 80%. So again, <clears throat> I understand the logic behind saying, well, relative risk is, you know, it takes you down to one rather than two. That's not worth it. Uh, no, it's not. But if your risk, if you if you do a CIMT and you see that you've got this going on, a heterogeneous plaque, um, which we saw here, heterogeneous plaque, 1.209 millimeters and 1.215 millimeters. That means you've got this. You've got some uh, stable plaque there, and then you've got some soft plaque in a couple of areas. In other words, you're at risk for that hot plaque to break out, cause a clot, and kill you. And we're not talking about 2% risk anymore. We're talking about 40% risk. So on the other side of it, let's go back to Dr. Latke's uh, argument. Again, you have to understand Latke's argument, Ridker's argument, all of these arguments are within a vacuum that does not include the extra risk stratification included with getting a CIMT. All they're looking at is Framingham. Let me go back and see if we can find that on here. Um, ah, it's in here, and I know I've read it in here, and I've read it in the Jupiter study. They looked at people that had low risk as defined by Framingham. They did not do CIMT. So back to Latke's uh, response. At this point, the current guideline for measurement of C-reactive protein remains reasonable. A measurement may be obtained in asymptomatic individuals who have an intermittent level of risk. They're talking about 10%. They're not talking about 2%, and they're not talking about 40% as estimated on the basis of standard clinical risk markers. That does not include CIMT. It wasn't, it's not a standard now. It wasn't a standard then. There isn't, but it's well-researched, and I can get into that. I'm not going to get off on a rant on that. I'm already on enough of a rant. Um, there's increasing recognition that lab and screening costs need to be evaluated according to their effects on clinical management, not just risk levels, risk levels. And he ends up with, Jupiter provides yet more evidence about the effectiveness of statin therapy in reducing cardiovascular risk, even among persons who would not currently be considered for pharmacotherapy. Guidelines for primary prevention will certainly be reassess reassessed on the basis of Jupiter, but the appropriate size of the orbit of statin therapy depends on the balance between the benefits of treatment and its long-term safety and cost. So would I recommend a statin for someone that's Framingham low risk? No, I'd recommend a CIMT. If the CIMT is negative, I don't recommend a statin. But if the CIMT does show plaque, I do. Thank you for your interest and thanks for your patience in putting up uh, with a little bit of a rant.